And we'll start. I start. Recording. I start. Yeah, I start the new. All right. So now we're ready to start. Uh, okay. So if you recall, uh, last time <laughs> uh, we proved that our H uh, bullet of U and P1, P2, and so on. Uh, what was the formula for it? We represented it as how? Oh, as sum over m factorial, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> not m factorial. Sum over m. Yeah. From zero to. No, you, we don't need. Um, guess we don't need separate sum. Yes. Uh, it's sum over n. Sum over n from. Zero to infinity, I guess. Sum of all n. Sum of side of mu equals to n. Uh, no, we don't need it anymore. It's x of u uh, sum okay. over boxes in mu. Of box. Mm -hmm. Do we have? Oh, maybe let me write it differently. Uh, I J in mu uh, J minus n, right? Uh, times S mu of P P one P two one. S mu of one zero. Do you remember this? Did I write it correctly? No, but, but not S mu of one zero zero, just D mu over. It's the same. Yeah, but we we, we did discuss it before. No, I mean the, on the lectures we obtained originally. I think this version. Ah, okay. <clears throat> uh, do you remember this? Yes. So we obtained this formula, and now what we're going to do is to uh, study, we, we, we want to, uh, to study uh, generalized versions of it, but uh, the generalization has some motivation behind it. So we, we don't just generalize it in some arbitrary way, but we generalize it. Such that it remains uh, what's called a KP tau function. And now we're going to talk a little bit about that. So uh, uh, let me uh, go a little bit ahead of myself. So I will uh, say that what we are going to do is this. We are going to say that, uh, so you can write this as so you can write this as a product of IJ and mu, right? Mu um, f of uh, f of IJ. Sorry. F of i minus. F of j minus i. F of j minus i. F of j minus i. Where in this case f uh, f of k is equal to just x of of what x of u k. Is this correct? <coughs> so, so we define a new function f, which uh, which is a function from natural k. So this is f as a function of integers. Integers. Um, integer 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 k. It's a function of integers. Uh, and from that in this case, it's x for uk. Uh, and uh, what our prime factor here is this, right? So, uh, and the point is that it's a so called content product. Product of function which depends on contents of the Young diagram. Yes. Of the position. And the point is that we're going to generalize this to 
basically arbitrary f. So in this case, f is x for dk, but you can generalize it to arbitrary f. Instead of x for dk, consider some other function. And people who have tried to do uh, the homework, they already might have seen that. In fact, for monotone chorus numbers, you get exactly the same form for the generated function, but uh, except that this f is some other function. Not x for pk, but some other function. You can see it in the homework. For monotone chorus numbers, you can uh, obtain, following uh, what's written in the homework, you can obtain the answer in precisely this form just for some other f. Yes. I have to skip last lecture. So, could you recall is the sum of J minus Y related to uh, eigenvalues of common joint operators? Precisely, yes. yes. So, this, uh, this, this guy here is the eigenvalue we, uh, on the uh, last couple of lectures, we obtained uh, that this is the eigenvalue of the common joint operator with uh, <coughs> true functions. They are S mu of P, they are eigenfunctions. With uh, these eigenvalues, expected eigenvalues, and this is what we've done on the last two lectures, I think. Like that. Uh, yes. So the, the second, the second generalization is that instead of this S mu of one zero zero zero. Yeah, and the other thing which you can do is you can uh, here uh, our uh, second factor is S mu taken for some particular values of p, and instead of, so another thing is that you can, um, you can take this guy and write instead as mu of q1, q2, and so on, for some fixed q. So you can introduce some parameters, q1, q2, and so on, fix them, and look at this guy, so we have now, uh, some function of p, which is which uh, which is, depends on the choice of f, and depends on the choice of parameters q. Okay, uh, and the claim is that our original function and any function of this sort for some f and q, uh, uh, they are all uh, for for all such f and q choices of f and q. Uh, the resulting the resulting function of p is what's called a tau function of uh, kp hierarchy. Yeah, and the, the general plan for the last uh, know, six lectures, in fact, is starting from from this generating series, uh, prove that uh, each uh, so, so that n all uh, say numbers which are counted by the generating series, so the coefficient coefficients in front of the monomial of p1, p2, p1 to the power k1, p2 to the power k2, etc., uh, satisfies p2. So if you take this generating series, expand it in p variables, uh, then uh, Satisfies the logical recursion. Yes, it's satisfies the logical recursion. Yes, satisfies the key. Oh, it satisfies the logical recursion, sorry. Yes. And then uh, construct uh, omegas in such a way that we did uh, for simple words now and not words now. Then this omega will uh, satisfy kp. And this is the, the goal. The, the, the logical recursion. <laughs> the logical recursion. This is the goal for, for, the, last, for the next six lectures. And yes, the starting point is that this uh, generation series satisfied is a tau function of kp. Oh, in fact, I mean, we do not specifically need this for yeah, the proof yeah, of the yeah, modular yeah. curve. So it's just a motivation of yeah. why do we consider uh, these generalizations in particular. So because they, it is known that they are, uh, for them, for those generalizations, this is uh, some important class of functions. You do not get all possible KP tau functions this way, it's just a family of what's called hypergeometric KP tau functions, uh, but still it's an important. So, and, and so today we will see 
in in exam in an example of simple Hurwitz numbers, but in fact uh, this this type of series satisfies satisfies KP. And uh, also the next observation that as a special cases of such generation series, we obtain uh, uh, all discussed Hurwitz numbers. Yeah, so the generation series for Hurwitz numbers and yeah, all, yeah. I, I would say all known, mm -hmm. uh, all, all studied in the literature examples of, of generating series for words numbers, for types of words numbers. Yeah, the important thing is that it's a, a very nice generalization because it covers all all those cases, monotone, simple, <laughs> and many, many other types of words numbers which people are interested in. Uh, you need just to choose different take different choices for this f or those parameters q uh, and uh, then for all of those cases or at least for um, y, y class of them uh, we can prove uniformly the logical recursion so we have seen for simple and monotone we performed some computations and we've seen that uh, <coughs> the logical recursion seems to work for small cases right but we haven't proved it, uh, and it's complicated for to do this um, on case by case basis. Uh, but uh, the approach which we are going to discuss in the remaining uh, classes uh, is uh, not very. I mean, it's it's also not not completely trivial. It's uh, we will have to take time going through it, but uh, still, it's 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 uh, it covers all those cases uniformly. So we will in the end obtain a proof which works for many, many, many cases of Boris type numbers. Okay. Uh, now uh, let me just say that um, let me write down the so in terms of variable speed. Uh, suppose we have some function of variables p1, p2, and so on. Then uh, the, the original KP equation it takes the form uh, this form. Second derivative with respect to p2. So if you had some courses in mathematical physics, that maybe you know that there is this lax of presentation and so on and so on. We will not discuss this stuff uh, today or later. But there exists uh, this lax of presentation, of course. So you could write down the Newtonian and so on and so on. So this looks like uh, some very complicated, or at least moderately complicated, uh, nonlinear partial differential equation, right? Uh, of of all the four, and it can it has you see uh, quadratic terms. So it's not very it's not a very simple equation. Um, and uh, one might ask. Why do people consider specifically this equation? So first of all, uh, it arises naturally from physics. It's a generalization of uh, what's called the Perthevec de Vries equation, which governs. Originally, it appeared as an equation which describes the behavior of waves in canals. Like you consider a narrow canal with water, and you have uh, small waves there. And you need some equation which describes these waves of the water in, in the camp. And those Dutch uh, physicists, Kortovec and De Vries, because there are, they have so many camels in their country, so they had to <coughs> write an equation for that, and they did it. 
So thus appeared this uh, Cartavega Fries equation. Uh, but it turned out, and then uh, <coughs> if you consider a bit more general situation, when you consider some nonlinear effects in this uh, uh, way of propagation, uh, then you have this uh, cousins of the real equation. Um, so again, it describes some wave phenomena in physics. Uh, but mm, why is it why uh, why is it uh, interested interesting in in like more fundamental mathematics? Is that uh, it's um, those equations, like the Vega Freeze equation, the cousins of the Schwill equation, they give rise to what's called integrable hierarchy. So you uh, can, in fact, write an infinite tower of equations. Let me maybe just to give a taste of that. So uh, I can write like, the next one. So uh, there is some uh, technique which uh, produces out of them like an infinite tower of equations. Um, So, for instance, the next one is let me introduce some notation which we will uh, which we will use. So, I want to say that so this can be uh, more complicated written as uh, f to two. This f to two is just the derivative with respect to p two, and then again with respect to p two. So f to 2 is equal to f13, so this is the same, f13 minus 1 half, uh, f11 squared minus 1 12, f11111. Okay? So this is the same. And then I can write the second equation. It looks like f. Um, F32 equals to minus F11, F21 plus F41 minus 1, 6, F2111, and so on. So you, uh, <coughs> you get an infinite power of uh, differential equations, and mm, there are solutions of those uh, those equations. And why it is called an integrable hierarchy? Because it's in some sense exactly solvable. So you can reduce some what's called Hamiltonians of uh, those things and uh, write like uh, exact solutions to all those infinite numbers of differential equations, which is quite rare in the theory of differential equations because if you just consider some arbitrary differential equation, nonlinear equation, partial partial differential equation, then uh, generally you have no hope of exactly solving it. You can just numerically solve it. And this happens uh, that really is an exception. Because you can construct exact solutions. And moreover, to a Newton tower of mm, those equations. Uh, all right, uh, but I will not uh, describe um, how you construct those. Um, what is what was the ori original construction of this Einstein tower of differential equations? I will instead I will define this uh, using what's called Mm -hmm. uh, what's called the semi-infinite wedge formalism. So using this semi-infinite wedge formalism, I will find what's a KP tau function to me. And then I will use this definition right here. Uh, if you don't know, if tau function is, is more or less the solution of this. Yeah. Tau oh, but tau function is x of f. So we will use this notation. Tau is f of f. So f is the solution, 
And uh, tau function is the exponential of the solution of this infinite tower. So this is F, F solution. This is tau function. Yeah, and the, uh, so the source of, of this of all this stuff, uh, I think it's Milo Jimbo data, this uh, so, and also lecture lectures of cuts. Mm, uh, <coughs> the, the source where you can read that yes. is if you're interested in more detail. Not the original. Yeah. Uh, all right. So anyway, let's let's now introduce our semi-infinite wage formalism, and how are we going to do this? Mm. So consider some uh, infinite dimensional space V, where. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is the space of uh, Laurent series of a single variable. The space of Laurent series in some formal variables, uh, in some formal variables Z, okay? Is it, is it infinite to the negative side? No, no, no. So, Laurent series. It starts, it, it's that one. So, maybe right down. So, what, what I want to say is that uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm considering. So, the basis here is it's, it's, uh, the span of z to the power k, uh, z to the power k, where k is integer. And Mm. You can, so it looks like uh, C minus K. Uh, is that it's like yeah. yeah, yeah. So C minus K, Z to the power minus K plus, yeah, plus center in the positive direction. Yeah. Around, uh, yeah, maybe let's say around one uh, Will we need infinite to some? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so what is the problem? Is it? I guess we will not. Uh, okay, yeah. Maybe let's. But, let's, but, let's we, need, but, but we need that the infinite, infinite and positive direction. Uh, probably not. Not really. We'll 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 need infinite wedges. Uh, okay, we'll deal with it. Uh, let's for now think of them as Laurent polynomials. So this is just uh, the span of uh, um, basis vectors like this. Is it clear? Is it clear, to everyone? But maybe later we'll get to some completion. Yes. Yes. Maybe, maybe later we will we will consider some completion. Okay? But anyway, so we are interested in, in, in this guy. So this, uh, so for instance, you have elements there like, uh, like one, z minus zero, you have z minus one plus two, something like that. You have elements there in this V. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, we are interested in uh, what's called the mm, semi infinite wedge space, space, which is denoted as so the wedge product of guys from lambda infinity space. over 2v. Sorry, what's written on the way? These, two. These are elements of v, just examples of elements of v. Um, is the equation? Uh, oh, yeah. No equations so far. No, no, no. We just consider this infinite dimensional space, and then we consider this thing. Uh, so we start with an already infinite dimensional space, and then we can we put it into uh, infinity of half uh, power 
alternative power. So what is this guy? Uh, it's mm, the span of uh, V mu, where mu are our friends, the individual partitions. Okay? So mu can be uh, mu can be empty, right? So mu can be empty, then it can be one, can be It can be one one, it can be three, two one, one one one, and so on. Okay. Uh, and it partitions for Sorry? It partitions for young diagrams. Uh, it is the same same thing. Okay. If your partitions is the same as young diagrams, right? So you can represent integer partition if you get some other as a young diagram. Um, so so wh why we, why you wrote uh, polynomials not series? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, then what is this V mu? V mu is this guy. It's uh, Z to the power mu one minus one, yes, Z, Z to the power mu, mu two minus two, etc. So from as mu uh, is a finite uh, partition from the like say length k, then uh, in the k wedge uh, wedge multiplier. We will have z, uh, z mu k minus k, and then z to the power minus k. Minus so we, we consider we consider in this case we are always uh, saying that it was it wasn't always the case when we deal dealt with poorest numbers, but here we say that mu one is always greater or equal yes. than mu two, mu three, and so on. So always in this direction because this is important here. Uh, for example, this uh, v what is v empty? When mu is just an empty partition, what is V empty? Hmm? No. Mu no. empty, but we have Z. We, we have to think, think of when, when you do not have mu i, when the length of your partition is uh, some L, then mu L plus 1, we uh, treat it as 0. It's a vacuum vector. Yes. It's the vacuum vector, but what is it in terms of Z? Of Z, it, Z to the minus 1. Like yes, minus two. Z to the minus oh, 1. Zero. Yeah, yeah. Z to the minus and 2. And we claim that Z to the minus the 3. Is and so from, from some multiplier uh, coincides with this uh, V empty because of uh, mu is a finite partition. So, say for example, I don't know, <coughs> maybe you uh, write down, so yeah. say V, I don't know. What one. is V2 uh, 1? <coughs> so, uh, probably 1, uh, V to the power of 1 and V to the power of minus 1. Z to the power of one, which is z to the power, so it's uh, minus one. And then what else? What what's next? Oh, then minus three, minus four, minus five. yes, minus three, minus four, and so on. Okay. You clear? Who is this thing? Just keep in mind that here we treat all powers of z as uh, different, as independent things, as independent basis vectors of our v. So, for instance, here in this wedge product, you cannot like uh, take the, some some power of z out, uh, like, move yeah, it yeah. from here to here. It's, it's not possible. 
will become a different vector. Just think of those guys as, so this is, I, I mean, let me maybe underline it. So this is one vector, another vector, another vector, and then you take a wedge product. And you can be, take an infinite, uh, <laughs> uh, this semi-infinite wedge product, infinite wedge product in one direction of uh, vectors from this infinite dimensional space. I'm sorry, yes. what is uh, wedge product? Hmm? What is this? What is wedge product? Wedge product, uh, it's just formal product with the condition that, uh, with the condition that it's anti-symmetric. So for instance, if um, at some point you will So you, you want to compute, uh, suppose you have some, some vectors, uh, V, not V, but let's say, suppose I have beta 1, beta 2 in V. And I want to compute beta 1 uh, wedge beta 2, right? So uh, I want uh, you. You need to use this anti. Uh, at, the, the point is that we were saying that z to the power k, which z to the power l is minus z to the power l, which z to the power k. This is the only thing which you need to know. <coughs> the uh, the anti symmetry and of course uh, it's polynomial. Uh, so if you have like wedge product of, of the sum uh, times something, you can uh, expand the bracket, right? So and then uh, here you can say that if it was uh, like suppose this was a z plus b uh, z to the power minus one wedge um, c square plus d z minus 2. So what will this be? Well, let's uh, always order uh, the degrees from uh, the, they should be descending in the descending order. So what will this be? So it will be a minus a c times product of yes minus a c z squared which z right so i guess uh, plus uh, yes minus minus b c minus b c of um, z squared z squared which z minus one uh, what else? Plus a d z wedge z minus two and uh, plus b d plus b d plus b d z minus one wedge z minus two. Okay. So you use uh, the anti-symmetry in order to. Uh, always write them in the descending order. And then you can consider an infinite product. So you have, you can, if, you, if you take uh, like b1, beta1, uh, <coughs> beta2, beta3, and so on, you can consider an infinite wage product, which makes sense because you uh, expand the brackets, get some, get some sums, uh, they might be they might be infinite sums, but we just uh, treat them as series. In, in C, oh, with coefficients from C. Uh, okay, so actually, why do we have uh, only half of infinity? Why do we have only half of infinity? Uh, well, here it, it stands for the fact that uh, you consider uh, this wedge product only 
in one direction and you get like uh, always infinite number of negative elements but only finite number of positive elements. Do you see this in our in our definition of V mu? There are always uh, infinitely many negative powers of that, and in fact, they are uh, you see all of them starting from some number, you see all negative integers starting from this number, but you see only finite number of positive ones. Okay. Um, And how is this related to our uh, differential equations in P? The fact is that there is what's called the uh, boson fermion correspondent. Namely, consider this uh, our space lambda infinity over half V and our space P of uh, formal series in P variable. Do you remember this? This was um, formal series in, in P1, P2, and so on. The space no, right. it's, uh, it's C of it's C of uh, uh, P1, P2, and so on. Yes. So formal series in P variables. <laughs> and there in P, if you remember, we had the basis as mu for all mu starting from the empty diagram and so on. So when I look with people, they form the base. So this guy is the span of S mu, and this guy is by definition the span of uh, the span of V mu. It will be a basis if we erase one of the rings. Yes. Uh, you're right. Uh, <clears throat> and so we, we skipped all the details about this was of the world correspondence. Uh, no, but I mean, you, you, you see that actually what's, this can be considered just as a span of sure, sure functions as mu of p, right? Uh, and this can be, this is by definition the span of v mu. So basically there, there is uh, clearly, there is they are isomorphic because uh, as, vector as vector spaces, as vector spaces, they are isomorphic where you map so v mu uh, to s mu. This gives you an, as a, an isomorphism as a vector spaces of of those uh, two guys. Okay, so this is this called uh, this is called the boson fermion correspondence. It has a nice. It has some deeper meaning, but we will not talk uh, about that in, in more detail. Also, but, uh, this is boson. And this is the, the space in the right hand side, uh, the space of series in, in physics. In uh, e it's a boson Hopf space, so called, and this uh, semi infinite space is called Fermion Hopf space. Yeah. yeah, so this is bosonic Hox space, fermionic Hox space. This uh, you can see uh, in physics, uh, maybe someone heard about this Dirac C. Uh, and this is basically this guy because you can, uh, you can think of this as um, <clears throat> of, those, of those guys. So you can look at the missing, missing so y if you consider some Vimu, uh, you have some missing negative powers and some extra positive powers compare it, if you compare it to the bottom back. So uh, basically you can think about this as you uh, have some, in physics people think about this as the fact that you have some, uh, in the vacuum you have some, <clears throat> some C uh, with, of um, states with negative uh, energy and uh, with, with negative, mm, yeah, with negative energy, and then uh, so you can define energy of you can uh, define each, uh, 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 yeah the energy of of all those basis vectors, and uh, what's happening when you proceed from the vacuum vector to some other vector is that you excite, so you take some some particle here with negative energy, and you move it 
over here to the positive side, and, you, and here you get a gap, and uh, on the positive side you get your function. So this is, I mean, just a few kind of waiting words, but the, on the terminology, but it has some very profound meaning in physics. But we're not interested in, in it right now. But uh, our mathematical statement is simple, just that we get uh, this isomorphism here in the vector spaces. And uh, the claim is um, not the claim, but uh, one definition of KP hierarchy definition definition uh, tau of uh, p1 p2 and so on is called a tau, uh, is is a kp tau function is a kp tau function if and only if If and only if on the programmatic side, it uh, uh, it is a it, it it is decomposable on the harmonic side. On the harmonic side. Uh, which is the same as saying that suppose we have, we uh, call this isomorphism, going <laughs> to, to call this isomorphism. Mm, I need a symbol. Ah, uh, we don't have a notation for this. Uh, uh, Maybe. Uh, a capital we already have as a solution of tau function. Um, BF with it's a map from fermions to bosons. Let's call it FB maybe. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's call this FB. No, it's bad. Um, the, okay, FB. Fine. No, all the letters are taken. FB, 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 FB. I think we will not need it, but FB. Kappa. Okay. So a kappa is a map from is a map from here to there. This has all okay. So uh, this is saying that, uh, which is the same as exists uh, beta one, beta two, and so on in D, such that. Uh, kappa of beta 1 wave and beta 2 wave and so on is uh, is the definition clear? Uh, no, because we don't know what is decomposable. I defined it. Uh, I'm calling an element in uh, on the fermionic side decomposable if it can be represented as a wedge of some element. Well, maybe we need for some part for more proof to expand the brackets. So these are some of the various vertices. Yes. So who is bigger? These are some elements from B. Yeah. They are some of the various vertices. I did the part K and then we expand the brackets. Then we expand the brackets, then we, after that, we Mm. Order them in the descending uh, in, in the descending order. We reorder all the powers of Z as they become uh, such that they become descending, and we take the sums of all the coefficients in front of V mu. And then we replace V mu uh, with S mu, and that's what we get. Strange question, but how can we order? Well, uh, z, z to the power of n. 
it's some infinite transposition, we know we need to know what is it sign. Uh, yes, so uh, you're right, but um, So for for this um, uh, for this to work, you need some uh, some restrictions on beta. Some restrictions on beta, yes. So if, what is the question? So if you have if we have some infinite sum, yeah, infinite wedge product of z to some powers. Yeah, yeah. We need to reorder them in uh, non decreasing order. Yeah. So the, the point is that uh, we, we, if we, if we uh, in order to be able to do this, uh, we uh, uh, we we need to we need the condition that for um, large enough i for um, large for uh, so i is greater than for i greater than some some m mm, uh, beta beta i starts with z to the power minus i plus c i one z minus i and it's true because of plus c two z plus two plus i so it was really uh, um, yes and also the rule takes all the nominals and we expand z again for so now so it was a very good question because indeed you need this condition in order to for this uh, infinite wedge product to make sense if you have this condition that starting from uh, from some some num uh, from some number all the bit i's they start from z minus i plus plus the rest, then uh, you do not have this problem with infinite problem rings. Do we really not have it? Well, let's see. If we have uh, if CI2 is 1, we, you said is CI2 is 1 for all, for all i, uh, for all i order and uh, uh, greater than m, for example, then we have uh, uh, z uh, i minus two, z i minus one, and it is all, always uh, and we don't know the sign of this intention. So to compute the sign of gravitation, we have to look at an infinite number of eyes. Yeah. No, we need to look. If we want to find the sign of the composition, it, it needs to be uh, finite. Uh, it needs to be finite. And if we have this, then uh, we have the mm -hmm. So, may I, so I was trying to say the following thing. Mm -hmm. There is a rule uh, uh, which we use to expand the brackets. So, yes. uh, for J large enough, from beta j, we take uh, z to the power minus j. Yes. Each time when we open the brackets. Yes, it, 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 it will solve. So again, start some stabilization condition when we reach sum. So, yes, we need, uh, uh, when we expand this as a, as a sum of v mu, we know that uh, we for every particular yeah. mu, v mu has to. Uh, start that from start start. with the bottom vector from, from the sum wedge. Yes. From the sum wedge multiplier. And so, so we expand yeah, so when, 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 when we, we expand it in the basis of the u, and then. So when you take this you product, the, you only the, look at the what uh, the parts which uh, which correspond to the mu. Because each multiplier from sum. Point will coincide with the bottom vector. 
and so he, he will be in in his place. So clear that this input which product will be known to the uh, input of a lab. Why is it in spank of uh, video? А почему, в смысле, почему бета и ты... Не, вот возьмем какие-то вот такие бета и ты. Да. Вот возьмем такое произведение там. Как-то раскрыл скобки, вообще говоря, получим не пойми что, там, бесконечную сумму. Почему они лежат в этом полубесконечном? Да. Вот не получается, для этого я придумал это правильно, потому что у нас каждый из слоганов, так сказать, какие слова были без инструментов. В смысле, давайте разложим его по этим пойми. Мы можем это сделать, правильно? Ну, определим, раскладываем таким образом. Да. Ну, еще можно взять пополнение, то есть все-таки это самое полубесконечное. Все-таки оно же это. Это пополнение пространства с базисом по нему. Но это нас не страшит, наверное. Потому что, например, с вами бесконечно много рядов. Какой час? Какой вариант? Почему? Нет, нет. Ну, если бы это, это сам ряд. Да. И мы там... Мы берем бесконечное количество. Ну, у нас, у нас каждый по нему, это тоже бесконечно. Ну, ладно, хорошо. Мы его берем, нам, нам... И мы берем начиная с некоторого момента, только э, на их месте за этой Да. То есть мы всегда будем работать только с начальным конечным куском этих штук. Ну, у нас вот в определении бетриста у нас стоит многоточие, это тут она бесконечно. Ну да, она бесконечная. Б. Получается, у нас есть бесконечно большие степени Z. Mm -hmm. Нет, ну это нормально, то есть там каждый конкретный. Ну это, конечно, маленький, но ну, каждый не определяет. Это же конечный сумм. Да, но каждый конкретный коэффициент будет все равно конечный сумм. Да. Потому что на него будут влиять только конечное число начальное. Не, на самом деле здесь можно предполагать, что у вас э, это за чем проблема? Нет, ничего. Ну, Я не поняла. Вот если у нас каждый БТИ, это вот такие суммы. И если мы, например, из каждого БТИ, который в Z в степени минус и плюс. Что? А Полина, скажите, что ты возьмем что? Второе слагаемое. Z в степени минус и плюс один. Да. И у нас, по у нас есть вот во всей произведении таком, симметрическом, у нас есть... Это такое слагаемое, которое, в котором Z все имеют степень больше, чем положено, потому что у нас с какого-то момента должна быть степень ровно там, Z минус и плюс, плюс что-то. Нет, ну сейчас, у нас бы конечное число тех, которые больше, мы их переставим. Полина, это конечно, что вот возьмем... Почему Возьмем вот такое там, значит, что почему не появится, куда, куда девается, куда исчезает вот такой вот такой вот такое слагаемое там z0, z минус 1, z минус 2, z минус 3 и так далее. То есть каждая сдвинута на один. Потому что вроде как оно возникает, если здесь везде брать вот это слагаемое. А, то есть почему все время за заряд может? Да. А, в смысле, вот это не представляется. Да, через... вот это вроде как не представляет, он ни с какого момента не будет э, z минус i, потому что всегда сдвинуто на единичку. И вроде бы это слагаемое появляется вот здесь, если брать всегда второе слагаемое вот в этих бетках. Я правильно понял вопрос? Да, да, да. Угу. Сейчас. 
Но ответ это не то, что мы просто такие не рассматриваем. Нет. Да, оно появляется. Сейчас надо как-то определение скорректировать сейчас. Мы действительно не хотим, чтобы такие появлялись. Ну, видимо, надо просто сказать, что начиная с какого-то момента мы должны брать везде вот за эту степень минусы ты у этих бы ты. Вроде сказали, да. Да, но... Да, 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 правильно. Это... Такое не возникает, потому что мы запрещаем, потому что с некоторого момента бета и э, равны z минус и соответственно, с этого момента уже со следующего шага, в смысле, тут уже будет то, что нужно. Правильно? Но сейчас да. вроде не запрещаем. Но сейчас надо дописать. Запрещаем. Но, но мы говорим, что э, тут надо добавить... Э, мы будем ставить условия на бета или мы будем ставить условия на раскрытие скобок? На бета. Ой, нет. Нет, нет, на бета так не у нас наш пример с экспонентами не пройдет. Почему? Потому что у нас бета ката это сумма z и минус k делит на этот сериал. Они каждый из всех карты бета ката бесконечно. Э, но. Ладно, с этим мы потом поборемся, но определение тогда правильно. Правильно, правильно определение, оно остается потому, что мы раскрываем скобочки так. Ну, вроде бы. Я хотел бы вот так написать, что значит, что это, это первое и второе, что. Ты хочешь сказать, что это начиная с какого-то момента просто за да. такой степени, но да. это не то, что мы хотим сейчас. А как ну, иначе? Если это не по один, тогда же так не представишь. Сейчас, ну как, тогда с этой проблемой никак не поборемся. Ну просто скажем, что... Э... Да. Сейчас, а он не обнулится автоматически? Еще раз, давайте посмотрим. Может, я не давайте, давайте еще раз посмотрим, значит. Вы говорите, что... Э... Можно сделать z нулевой, z первый. Сейчас давайте какой-нибудь пример, который соответствует этому условию. Рассмотрим. Да, может быть, я не... Да, наверное, я не прав, так нельзя. Ну, как какой-нибудь пример? Вот. Да, можно, ну, можно, можно же еще пример. Это z минус 3, z минус 2, z минус 5, z минус 4, z минус 7, z минус 6 и так далее. Ну, у нас, например, будет вот такой пример, который в это нам дальше понадобится. Вот давайте рассмотрим такой пример, который нам будет дальнейший. So let's consider the following example when beta i is equal to this guy. Some k i I think that's the same. K i. K j, which is the same. K j. The k i. No. This, this should be k i. Uh, and we are interested in b1, wage b2, k i. So this uh, starts with what power? From the very start, right? So it, it starts always from <coughs> this is always z to the power minus i.
Yes? So you have, let's write this down. So this will be uh, B1. It's Z minus 1 plus Z minus 2 plus 1 half Z minus 3 plus uh, minus 2. Yeah. Uh, well, let's first discuss this one. I mean, uh, you see that it, it has all possible uh, positive terms, right? Always. So this example is actually illustrative. Plus one half z zero plus and so on. Wedge is that So you want to say that, okay, let's look at this element, this, this, no, and no, 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 one, third, first, third, first, third, and so on. First, third, first, uh, mm. minus one, zero, minus three, minus two, and so on. And it's, it is many, it is uh, infinitely many transpositions. Can I ask a stupid question? What if our, our series are now in head to the other side? Yes, there was. Uh, we can consider some uh, completion of the space V which we had originally, which allows us to take uh, infant series as well. We, but in fact, only to the positive side. <coughs> uh, just a moment, so. Mm -hmm. Не, это действительно то, что нужно здесь. Скажем, что... Uh, yeah, so uh, in mu, right? Then uh, it's it, it, it's uh, it always should uh, should have the form um, this form, right? So it's from uh, from some uh, from some point, it looks like uh, z to the power minus i. The i's uh, term of the product is z to the power minus i. So here, indeed, let's say that uh, what is the how do we define Have uh, suppose we take this product beta one definition. How do we define beta one, beta two, and so on, beta three, and so on uh, inside the? Let's 
side uh, lambda integer of uh, v, we say that first of all we have this condition that uh, there exists a mem such that uh, for all i larger than m uh, beta i is equal to z to the power minus i plus c close the parts on that side and then we say that Yes, and then we're saying that um, we take, we're taking only um, mm. um, we're taking only the uh, the main term there which is which yes and, and when expanding the brackets, when expanding the brackets uh, in all by final terms, but a finite number of terms. One should take uh, uh, why the definition is correct. Почему это корректно? Но нужно зависеть от количества первых слагаемых, которые. Ну, вот этого конечного числа слагаемых, которым мы берем, э, ну, не за способами. На только конечное число. Да, 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 но конечное число же разное, почему мы получаем всегда одно и то же. Нет, еще раз, то есть вы для всех конечных чисел. Для всех конечных чисел. То есть вы берете, э, значит, для любого, для, для э, это конечное число не анифицировано. То есть для всех конечных чисел вы это делаете. То есть вы раскрываете скобочки таким образом, что вы суммируете не по всем, не по всем таким выборам из каждого бета-итова, каждого слагаемого, да? а вы суммируете по всем возможным выборам из конечного числа бета -итов. Вы берете любые, а из всех остальных только за этой сыты. И по всем возможным кони... таким количеством. Да, хорошо. Можно сказать это так, что мы раскрываем всеми возможными способами, как обычно, а потом оставляем только все... Да. Ну, можно так, но мы просто давайте вот нам надо как-то определить бесконечное произведение. Да. Его определим вот так. так. Понятно всем определение? Это не совсем то, что мы берем. Ну да, ну в общем теперь правильно написано. То есть вот, вот, вот у нас каждое БТИ то представляется в этом базисе, да? Каждое БТИ то представляется в базисе из этого БТИ. Uh, но ну, причем мы, мы разрешаем даже бесконечные положительные стороны. Ну, вот как бесконечно положительную сторону uh, 
комбинации, но при этом, когда мы раскрываем скобочки, мы э, все время, начиная с того момента, берем только z минус y. И всеми способами так делаем. И так далее, видимо, все проблемы. Не знаю, знаете, не то, что вы говорили, не то, что Полина говорила. Таких просто не появляется по всей жизни. Using this finite number in all possible ways. All right. So uh, now is, is is everything solved? Is it clear? So we're saying that it's a KP uh, function if it can be it's decomposable in this sense on the in the only thermodynamic side. Okay. Uh, and on the seminar we will see how it's related to um, to our equations of KP hierarchy. Yes. So uh, in fact. Uh, let me just state that there is a theorem which we will uh, not really discuss in the detail why it's true. Theorem so that um, tau is a KP tau function. When, whenever the following Perot equations hold. So this bench product of betas also holds the points of semi infinite gross median, uh, and this is uh, we, what is uh, which is right now is so called. Luker relations for this uh, semi infinite gross median, uh, so called Kiroko Pilonier equations. And in the seminar, so we will not prove this, this theorem, uh, but in the seminar, we we'll, in perhaps we'll check that we'll see how this. Residue formula work. In fact, and how from this residue formula obtain this uh, partial differential equation in F, which we had in the beginning of our lecture. This is the residue in C is equal to zero. In, in zero, Z is equal to zero. So the claim is that this can be written as a, as a set of, uh, if you have tau of p1 and so on, then uh, is decomposable on the fermionic side when, if and only if uh, this holds and this hold, you consider this as, um, so it, it should hold for all p, q, p, and q. Okay. And so, uh, so well, this should be an identical, <laughs> uh, identically zero in P and Q. Yeah, and if you take, a, if you expand the Z and take a residue, you obtain this uh, equality in P and Q, and it, it should be identical in P and Q. And if you take a coefficient in front of some monomial in Q, then you obtain uh, an, equation, an equation in for uh, tau function depends on p variable. So, for instance, the coefficient in front of q3 of this uh, you wrote the equation it's coincide with uh, the first is the same as kp1 the first equation of kp1 which we were written about and we'll see this on the same on the center, we'll try to compute the coefficient in front of Q3. 
here and uh, check that it indeed is coincides with with what was written there. Maybe, now we need to maybe uh, break. Let me just mention that so, but, but, uh, the plan. The plan going forward is is first to show that uh, you remember that we had this trivial uh, the trivial part. U to zero. So this is when you uh, put U to zero, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to see that this. This guy is. Uh, and afterwards, we want to see that if you uh, deform it, because uh, we've seen that this x of, of the one is sum over mu uh, s mu of one zero 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 s mu of p. Right? This was x of p one. And in order to get the the whole the, uh, h, you need to plug here our thing, namely this f product of the boxes of i, j, and u, and u. Here we get the complete age. And we want to see that first this guy without this is a capital function. And if you plug this in, then it's still a capital function. So because it's possible to see which wage product corresponds to this. Namely, the claim is that in fact x of uh, p1 is no, nothing else than kappa of uh, beta 1 wage. This is what was written above, namely sum a from zero to infinity, z to the power i minus i. Minus I. So uh, the claim is that x of p1 is composable in this sense, uh, specifically for these betas which we mentioned already above. And then we'll see that. <laughs> let's ask the break, let's see this and uh, for instance uh, this this plane this uh, we'll do as a part of the seminar from the seminar we will uh, so, first yeah, of all yeah, check I, this I, and then check this ch check this plane and then we will see that uh, this generalized to its generated function is in fact also a capital function. Mm -hmm. okay.